Spent almost that entire time underground in hard pan. And I so a lot of hard pan in my place. Come and look. So basically when the May rains come, these toads come up, they breed explosively for the first two or three storms, and then they go back under. And that's their life. And you say twenty years? And they can live for fifteen or twenty years, yep. Mostly, usually on the, the a, lower end of that. There's got to be a lesson in there somewhere. Patience? <laughs> <laughs> they so they, they, eat, they eat just about anything like uh, they can fit in their mouths. They're, so they're, fairly, they're a fairly typical frog in that sense. And so although they're called a toad, they're not actually a toad. Um, they're a, a very primitive version of a frog. Um, and they have these little um, projections on their hind legs, these little spades that are keratinized like fingernail and they use those to dig and I've seen them dig through a packed grid road they can dig straight down they just corkscrew like this backwards and you can dig through anything as far as I'm concerned and as soon as those rains come you hear these is it, it sounds like a well when you get a, cor a chorus going it sounds like a bunch of ducks with a sinus infection and it's really really loud you'll hear them from a section or more over so it's really hard to actually tell where it's coming from because they they're so loud that it seems like they're really close but you end up walking for miles in the dark stumbling through you know the, every, every little low patch gets filled with water and that's what they breed in and they're actually one of the fastest metamorphing so frogs in the world so around here our our spadefoot tadpoles we were watching some ponds at um, at Dawson's and watching some ponds up at Four Corners on Anderson Land there. And from the day they started calling to the day we got the first toad was five weeks exactly. And so if you compare that to uh, the boreal chorus frogs that start calling on, on uh, Easter and they, they metamorph in August, these guys, they're designed for the desert, they're designed for the dry land, they, they fill, as soon as these ponds fill, they're breeding, their eggs are laid in the first day or two, they hatch in the second day, and then they gorge themselves on, on uh, algae and things until they grow up to be enough. They start sprouting legs really early. The legs have little spades on them. Even the tadpoles can move over land for short distances so they can get out of a drying pond. And in case they're not developing fast enough, they have a second morphological type. So if they run into a stage where there's too many tadpoles in the pond and they're not getting enough food, some of them will switch to be cannibals and they change their entire morphology to be a cannibal. So no longer, they can't graze on algae anymore. They develop these big crushing jaws and all they eat is their, well not their siblings, they actually avoid eating their siblings using chemical cues, but they eat their competition. And so this, that's how these animals function in such a, it's a rough place to be a frog here. And, <laughs> and so they've taken, they've taken living in a rough place and they have a very, very rough lifestyle, but they're one of the most interesting frogs out there. Mm -hmm. They have a very, very cool life history and they're very, very indicative of the neat biology you get in this area. When you face life with such difficult challenges as an eight month winter where it's ridiculously cold for the, uh, an animal that doesn't have internal body temperature control and then you say okay well some years we're gonna give you tons of rain some years we're gonna give you none and this is how this these are the animals that come from that so it, 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 it's really spectacular biodiversity that we have here it's just we don't get to see it every day and I was lucky enough this summer to spend the whole summer chasing around and killing a good number of the very very interesting Bees and creatures. <laughs> and you didn't do the scorching what? heat until the last couple. Of no, weeks. no, it was lucky for the toads. They actually got out. <laughs> Only a couple of them died. Yeah. What about what about mud puppies? Mud puppies? Um, well, around here, those would be juvenile uh, tiger salamanders. So that's the intermediate. So, yep. Yeah. So they some of them in here they don't stay juveniles, but there's some places like in BC in the North Interior. Um, they actually stay in that stage their entire life and they actually develop um, like reproductive characteristics but they stay with the gills and stuff. But here, um, those they'll take a couple of years to go through their juvenile stage 
And then those ta- those um, tiger salamanders will live 20 years as well. And they spend they do the exact same thing as the spadefoot toads. They go underground, they go in a burrow, and they wait for rain. I mean, these, there's so many animals that give just a real idea of how patient an organism can be <laughs> just to reproduce. Yeah. It puts bar life. <laughs> right? You know, a couple of wasted nights. Yeah. That's nothing compared to 350 days underground. <laughs>